Hi everyone, welcome back to The Mystic in the Woods. I'm Kate and in this installment of our Shadow Work and Tarot series, we're going to be talking about the queens, the mother wound, and mothering ourselves. So in our last installment in this series, we talked about inner child work and the pages. And I think that this video goes really well with that one because very often when we're doing inner child work, a huge part of that is reparenting ourselves and healing things like the mother wound and the father wound. So we're going to talk about the queens in this video and how they can point us to different aspects of the mother wound as well as invite us to re-mother ourselves. Now the mother wound is basically something that happens when our mothers are consistently unable to attune to us when we're children. Our mothers are our first examples of the feminine, of what it means to embody the feminine, to move through the world in a feminine way, um, how safe the feminine is to embody and to rely on and to trust, um, how she interacts with others, how she interacts with herself and cares for herself. The mother wound encompasses all of this. Um, this wound though it can show up in a wounded dark capacity so envy cold jealous it can show up in a wounded light capacity as well so lack of boundaries um taking care of others to the point of self-sacrifice these kinds of things so we can develop this wound through conscious interactions with our mothers and how they treat us as well as unconsciously through programming by society and watching how our mother moves through the world, how she balanced caring for herself with caring for us, how she treated her partner, how she interacted with the world, how she, how she moved through the world models for us how we should move through the world, theoretically. And we pick up a lot of stuff about who we think we are and how we think we should act through what is modeled for us. Now, the queens are really great cards to talk about when we're talking about this because they all point to different aspects of what it means to be a mother, archetypally speaking. Archetypally, is that a word? <laughs> um, what I mean is on an archetypal level. So I'm not talking about literal sex and gender mother versus father here. I'm talking about this archetypal energy of the mother. You can think about this as a divine mother, as Mother Earth, a literal mother. Um, but the divine mother and mothers is like a separate video. There's a whole thing there with the mother wound as well. But the queens point us to various aspects of this mother wound and how it can show up. So it can show up again in a wounded light capacity, in a wounded dark capacity, and it can be an invitation on how we can best mother ourselves at this time. Now, if the queen shows up in a uh, position like what shadow piece is coming up, when did it begin, what is the root of it, these types of positions, it's probably pointing, in my opinion, or in my experience, although I get, you know, you should take what resonates with you from this video and leave what doesn't. This is not the comprehensive, um, you know, written in stone guide on the queens. But when a queen comes up in one of those positions, I'm starting to wonder about the person's relationship with their mother. If it comes up in a position of support or integration, I'm really going to look at mothering themselves. Now, I, of course, have the six card spread with the 40, 40 question bank plug and play spread. You can get that for free on my website. The link is below um, if you want a place to start and a whole bunch of different shadow prompts. So that's kind of where the queen can show up directing us to a shadow piece that we need to heal or in a support function, inviting us to mother ourselves in a specific way at this time. So I'm going to show you guys a couple of different card depictions as we move through this. And of course, like, please always know you never need to buy these decks. You don't have to have any specific deck. I just think that these depictions can be really helpful to look at. So let's start with the Queen of Pentacles because I think that she is um, secondarily to like the Empress. She's the one we automatically think of as the archetypal mother in the deck. And the Empress can absolutely point you to the mother wound as well. Um, so if she were to come up in a shadow position in the spread, you could absolutely think about that as well. I'm going to save her for something specific. I have another video planned where we're going to talk about the Empress. Um, but if she were to come up in a shadow position and intuitively the mother wound is what were to come up for you, then go with that. So let's talk about the Queen of Pentacles. So here she is from the Lightseer's Tarot. And here she is in the Tarot of the Abyss. And I like these two because she's very connected to nature here. Um, and she's very confident and very sure of herself. In Tarot of the Abyss, she's clearly like planting something or nurturing something. 
Um, this is from the Ember and Aura Tarot. This deck is out of print, but I still want to show you at least a couple of these queen depictions because they really shaped how I see the Queen of Pentacles. So this queen, she has a baby on her hip, she's pregnant, she's like, um, caring for this tree and picking from this tree. She's also like turning it into something like there's a knife in jars. So she's like, she's really that archetypal nurturing mother in this card, right? So when this card shows up in an integrated way, so she's got her integrated dark or integrated light, she's healthy and balanced. She is that nurturing mother. Um, that we all kind of think about stereotypically, but the one who's doing the like the stay-at-home mom role because it is completely aligned for her not because it's being forced upon her or she believes she needs to do something like that or she's self-sacrificing but because it is completely completely aligned for her to do so one way that you can think about how this queen mothers is think about like a really good gardener okay she knows when to prune, she knows when to pick weeds, she knows when to fertilize and nurture. She's in tune with the seasons and the cycles. She knows that the garden can't produce all year long, that there's going to be a time for her to step back. She also knows that she can't actually control how the plant grows, okay? She can nurture it, she can provide it with the things that, she, that it needs to be safe and to protect it and to be healthy, but then she has to step back and let it grow. Um, because there's really nothing she can do to force the process. And so when this queen is showing up in a wounded light capacity, I tend to think about her as like a helicopter mom. Like she's really overprotective, over, not overbearing in like a controlling way, but in like an over nurturing way. Um, which for people, for anybody here who maybe had a cold mother, I know that that sound, maybe sounds a little bit weird, but being over nurturing can certainly cause some issues. Um, if she's showing up in a wounded light capacity, she may be self, um, not self, but caring for others to the point of self-sacrifice, okay? In a balanced way, she cares for herself so she can care for others. In a wounded light capacity, she cares for others at the expense of herself. Um, let me check my notes here really quick. And the other way, there's one more way this could show up in that wounded light capacity, and that is if you think about um, doing something just for show, okay? Like, like, like mothering is a role that needs to be done in a specific aesthetic. Like this, she's mothering to make herself look good to the world. And I think that that can be a form of wounded light for this as well because of the conditioning that women can carry around what it means to be a good mother. Now in a wounded dark capacity, she is, let me look at my notes again here real quick. Here we go. Yeah. So in a wounded dark capacity, she can show up as, you know, poor spending habits. So overspending, um, poor work-life balance, overworking, for example, um, because she is also setting an example of how the feminine interacts with money, the queen of pentacles specifically. So if she is overspending or underspending or hoarding or something like that, that is also going to show up in a wounded way. Now, the invitation here, which it shows up in a support capacity, is really, in my opinion, and for me, sure, it can be about finances, but I think there are going to be other cards that point to that. Um, it's really going to be about your physical body. Are you eating well? Are you sleeping? Are you drinking enough water? Are you getting outside? Are you moving your body in a way that's healthy for you? How are you physically taking care of your body right now? And how can you step into that mothering role to mother yourself in a physical way? Okay, maybe you need to take a bath. Maybe you need to put a face mask on. Or maybe you need to eat something really nourishing for dinner and go to bed early. But she's really looking at your physical body. So let's talk about the Queen of Wands next. So again, here's from the Lightseer's Tarot, from Tarot of the Abyss. And I like the Tarot of the Abyss cards because they're all so connected to their elements. Um, and then here's from the Ember and Aura Tarot. Now in a, we're gonna talk about this, we'll, we'll use this card as our example here because I think that this is my least favorite queen in the Ember and Aura Tarot. Not that it matters too much, but we'll use this queen. Now when this queen is embodied and balanced, 
she is kind of, in my opinion, like the magical queen. Like she's the witch, she's the priestess, she's the, um, the sorceress, you know. She's really embodied her own personal magic and she models that for others. She models healthy sexuality, healthy passion, um, healthy risk taking. The queen, of, the queen of Wands models all of that and fully embodies it. Now, when she shows up in a wounded light capacity, in my opinion, she's showing up in, I'm just looking at my notes again because I don't want to forget anything important. Um, I think that she can show up in a feeling like you're not enough, in a very toxic version of like love and light only. Um, the Queen of Wands absolutely embodies her shadow and her light to the fullest. So I think she's also the queen that when she's showing up in a wounded light capacity, we're seeing bypassing, like spiritual bypassing, emotional bypassing, like just stay happy and, and focus on the good stuff and be grateful. And not that we shouldn't do that. We should do that. But we also need to acknowledge the hard stuff in life as well. And I think that she can show us, point us to that like wounded light capacity. Um, I also think about if she's showing up in a wounded light that her fire has been dimmed perhaps. So we could be looking at like uh, a lot of the stereotypical wounding we carry from Christianity, for example. When she shows up in a wounded dark capacity, I think the biggest thing here is jealousy and anger. We can really see jealousy and anger um, come out in this queen. When it comes out in a shadow aspect pointing us to the mother wound, there is absolutely an envy. There can be an envy component to a mother-daughter specifically mother-daughter relationship, although I'm sure mother-son as well, but I I am not a son. Um, but there can absolutely be an envy component to a mother-daughter relationship, and I think that this can point us towards that. Now, when she shows up to support us in a healthy, integrated way, I think she's really asking you where you need to embody your magic, your natural magic, and your 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 form of individual magic and passion. Where can you embody that? Where can you bring that into your life a little bit more and a little bit more and allow yourself to really see the joy in it? This queen, she's so happy and she's got like the fire in her hand and she's got like the familiar black cat, right? So I think that it's really about reclaiming when she shows up in a supportive role, reclaiming your magic, reclaiming your authenticity, reclaiming your connection to the divine. Okay, so let's talk about the Queen of Cups because I think that the Queen of Cups is a really mm, common, I think is the word I'm looking for, a really common version of the mother wound. So here's from the Ember and Aura and you can see she's very like mystical and watery. Her eyes are clo closed, her third eye is open. Here's from Tarot of the Abyss where she's again, she's very connected to the water. Um, Lightseer's Tarot, again, she's part underneath the water. So we see this this queen will sometimes show up as pregnant as well. She's very intuitive. She's very emotionally intelligent. She is very empathetic, but can separate her own emotions from others when she's showing up in this, in this integrated way. Um, she's not taking on other people's emotions and drowning in them when she's showing up in a balanced, integrated way. Now, I think that she can point us towards the mother wound again in a wounded light or a wounded dark capacity. And in a wounded light capacity, I think we really see her show up as a wounded healer, as drowning in other people's emotions. So like here, you know, she should be able to hold her emotions as separate from others. But when she can't do that and she's drowning in other people's emotions and then makes those emotions her responsibility. So I don't know how many of you um, have seen women who, and I have, I fight this in myself, is um, bringing on the, taking on other people's happiness as our responsibility. I think that is a wounded light um, of both the Queen of Wands, but definitely the Queen of Cups as well. Okay, and the last one in the wounded light, and this was the, an important one. My camera stopped recording there. Um, this is the important one is that there's there's bypassing again. So there's an inability to sit with hard emotions and instead a focus on only happy emotions to the point of bypassing, which can be really uncomfortable. Um, so she's unable to hold emotional space for her children. 
to feel the hard stuff and instead tries to just get past it and fix it. So one of the best pieces of parenting advice I have personally read because I'm a parent of a toddler is that I can't fix everything for my toddler, nor should I. I can't make him happy constantly, nor should I. What I need to do is I need to keep my own emotions regulated and hold space for him to feel the hard stuff so that he can be upset, he can be angry, and I can hold that space for him to feel those things and teach him how to hold those emotions and how to express those emotions safely without bypassing them. Now in a wounded dark capacity, we get emotionally manipulative, we get, um, let me just check here, yeah, emotionally manipulative, and the other one I really wanted to hit on was making her children responsible for her own emotions. So I do think that that is a very common mother wound where a mother is unable to uh, regulate her own emotions, again, due to her own trauma. And so she is unable to emotionally attune to her children again and often makes her children responsible for holding space for her own emotions. And so we can see that come up that way. When we see her come up in a supportive role, I think it is really, really about what emotions do you need to honor? What emotions do you need to feel or hold space for? And what emotions do you need to allow yourself to fully feel? Because very often, for example, when we're feeling anger, there's usually something underneath that. Shame, grief, there's an emotion underneath that that we don't wanna feel. The Queen of Cups and the Queen of Swords, who we'll talk about next, they're very emotionally intelligent. They can tell the difference between these emotions. But one of the things I've been really passionate about lately when I'm working with other people, and I actually have a whole program coming out, stay tuned, and we're gonna hit this stuff really deep, um, is that I have found that a lot of women are socialized to actually not be able to fully identify emotions. And so therefore it becomes really hard to hold space for those emotions and we take them on as identity. So shame, envy, anger, overstimulation, I have found that a lot of women actually can't identify the difference between these things. Um, and that's due to a societal programming, it's due to mother wounds, it's due to all that type of stuff. Um, but when the queen comes up in a supportive way, the queen of cups, she really is asking us like to sit with the emotions that are uncomfortable, to not bypass them, but to sit with them and to feel them all the way through. All right, let's talk about the queen of swords, the last queen on the list. If you've been here a while, you know she is my absolute favorite. I think she's my favorite card in the entire deck, and I think she gets a real bad rap. So, here are a few. These are my favorite Queen of Swords. All three of these, I think they are beautiful depictions of the Queen of Swords that give us a new window in, okay? We see decisive confidence. We see vulnerability and commitment to the truth. And we see really firm boundaries when we talk about the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords is emotionally intelligent. She is a good communicator when she is um, showing up in a balanced, integrated way. She has rock solid boundaries and she knows how to hold them to protect her and others in a compassionate but firm way. When she shows up in a wounded light, which is not how we normally think about the Queen of Swords showing up, she has a lack of boundaries. There may be overthinking and there may be a lack of um, the ability to separate out what is an emotion from what is a story that we're telling ourselves, which is again what I was getting to a little minute ago. So there's, there's the emotion and then there's the story we tell ourselves about the emotion. And because of how a lot of us were raised and just in this society, it can be hard for a lot of women especially, but men too, to be able to separate these things out and see the difference. I'm feeling anxious, but is what I'm telling myself about that anxiety true or not? In a wounded light, she's overthinking, she can't do this, she has a lack of boundaries. In a wounded dark capacity, and this is where she gets her, her um, bad rap from, she's cold, she's envious, she's distant, and she does not care about other people's emotions. So again, she's not able to hold space for other people's emotions when she's showing up in this wounded dark capacity. So this is the difference between, you know, yes, you're feeling sad, yes, you're feeling anxious, yes, you're feeling angry, but is that story you're telling about yourself true? When she shows up with an invitation to mother, an invitation for you to mother yourself, 
I think that that is her strongest invitation, is what stories are you telling yourself and are they true? This is going to be like the major theme through the program. All the details will be coming out very soon, but I'm very excited. We will be releasing those details soon. I will be releasing those details soon um, about this program. And at the core of it, it comes down to is this true or is this conditioning? Is this who you are or is it an emotion? And does that emotion, that emotion doesn't rule who you are. And I think that the Queen of Swords is the one who comes in and she slices through that illusion and she says, but is it true? And so she can show up for us in a supportive role in that capacity. She can also ask us to come in and have boundaries to tell you, you know, to help us help us identify where we need boundaries and how to hold them. And she can come in to help us be more emotionally intelligent so we can communicate clearly and again, tease out those, those emotions from those stories without taking it on as our identity. So those are the Queens. I love the Queen of Swords. She is my favorite. If you want the PDF with my spread, you can get that at the link below at my website. Make sure you sign up for my newsletter. If you want all the details first about my upcoming program, I will be releasing um, details first to my email list. And if you have any questions, if there's anything you would like me to expand upon further, go ahead and put them into the comments and I will see you in the next video. Bye.